Recently, I've been trying to find a lot of very specific information on the stats and mechanics of Classic WoW, but sometimes the information that people give didn't exactly make sense or was poorly explained. So I spent the last two weeks or so doing a ton of research and working on this guide because I wanted to fix those problems. Whether you want to min-max, raid or PvP hardcore, or you just want to know what's going on under the hood, look no further. This is part one in a three-part series where I will discuss everything that anyone would need to know when it comes to the stats and combat mechanics of Classic WoW. Let me say that there are still some bits of information that even I am skeptical of, but with everything put in this video, I'll show a citation on screen that matches a link in the description. Also in the description, I'll include cheat sheets to the info that we've discussed and my afterthoughts on some of the sources. Without further ado, let's jump into part one, the primary stats. In episode 3 of the Beginner's Guide to Classic, I briefly went over the 5 main stats. I'm going to go over them again, but in much more detail, starting with Strength. Strength increases melee attack power, often referred to as AP. For Warriors, Druids, Paladins, and Shamans, one Strength gives you 2 points of melee AP. For every other class, one Strength gives you 1 melee AP, and 14 AP altogether equals 1 point of damage per second. This goes for ranged AP as well. And yes, I said damage per second, DPS, not just damage. Although AP does increase the amount of damage you'll do with each hit of your weapon, it does so based on the swing speed of the weapon that you're holding. That way, even if you have a very slow weapon, you'll still be getting the same DPS increase as someone with a very fast weapon. For example, let's say I'm a warrior that has 14 AP. If I equip a two-handed hammer with a swing time of three seconds, I will get plus three damage per swing. If I had a one-handed dagger with a swing time of 1.5 seconds, I'd only get 1.5 damage per swing. Regardless of my weapon speed, the AP I get gives me the same additional DPS. As far as for how to actually calculate the DPS, it's not too hard. You can just go to your character panel, look for AP DPS added from it, and the total DPS in the bottom right-hand corner of your character sheet. While we're talking about DPS and looking at the character sheet, let me also mention that if you're dual wielding, the DPS from your offhand weapon will be halved. So your overall DPS will be your main hand DPS plus half of your offhand DPS. For shield wearing classes, warriors, paladins, and shamans, you'll be able to block one point of damage per 20 strength when you wield a shield. When you see a shield in game that has, say, 15 block, it means that you'll block 15 points of damage when you block. Keep in mind, neither the block nor strength values actually affect your chance to block. When using a shield, you have a base 5% chance to block, and we'll talk more about that when we talk about damage avoidance and hit tables. Agility increases ranged attack power. For hunters, one agility gives you two points of ranged AP, and for warriors and rogues, one agility gives you one point of ranged AP. Agility also increases wand damage for casters, and you can find your ranged AP on your character sheet. Agility also increases melee attack power. For hunters, rogues, and druids in cat form, one agility gives one point of melee AP. Agility increases critical strike chance of melee and ranged physical attacks. A critical strike is an attack that hits the target and does double the normal damage. For 1% crit at level 60, rogues need 29 points of agility, hunters need 53 agility, and all other classes need 20 agility. Crit chance is found in your spellbook by hovering over your auto attack ability. Agility also increases dodge chance. At level 60 for 1% of dodge, rogues need 14.5 points of agility, hunters need 26 agility, and all of the classes need 20 agility. Dodge chance is also found in the spell book, just hover over dodge. If you're not level 60 but you want to find out the ratio for agility to dodge and crit, here's what you do. Find a piece of gear with plus agility on it and equip it. Record your dodge chance, take off the piece of gear, record your dodge chance again, subtract the second number from the first number, and divide by the amount of plus agility on the piece of gear. This is what we call math. <laughs> Intellect increases your maximum mana by 15 per point. It also increases the chance that you will raise your weapon skill when you attack something with a weapon. The rate is actually unknown, though it's not really necessary to know anyways. Intellect also increases critical strike chance of non-physical spells. Unlike physical critical hits, spells only do 150% of normal damage. Warlocks, druids, shamans, mages, and priests basically need 60 intellect per 1% spell crit. Paladins benefit as well, but at a 54 intellect per 1% spell crit. Stamina increases your health pool. The first 20 points of stamina only give you 1 health per point, and every point after that gives you 10. The reason they have this is to make things that scale with stamina better than things that scale with max health. For example, if I have 40 stamina, that equates to 220 health. If I have a passive that increases my stamina by, say, 5%, that means that I'd get 2 stamina equating to 20 health. In comparison, if I had a passive that increased my health by 5%, I'd only get 11 health. 
Spirit increases mana regeneration while not casting a spell. After you successfully cast a spell, spirit-based mana regeneration stops for 5 seconds, and we call this the 5 second rule. After those 5 seconds, spirit-based mana regen begins again and occurs once per server tick, which is about every 2 seconds. Shamans, druids, hunters, and paladins need 5 spirit to get 1 additional mana per tick, but priests, mages, and warlocks only need 4 spirit. On top of this, each class has its own specific base mana regen seen here. Spirit also increases health regen while you are out of combat. The rates aren't exactly known, though in a crude experiment of my own, the only thing I was able to find conclusively is that the higher health regen I got, the more spirit that was required. This is probably because, like mana regen, there's a base regen and regen per spirit that varies depending on class. I found that the rate is about 7.7 .7 spirit per one regen per tick. Armor reduces the physical damage that you would take. The max damage reduction you can have is 75%. If you'd like to find your exact physical damage reduction percentage, plug in your armor score into this formula and calculate, or simply hover over your armor number in your character sheet. At max level against a level 60, the maximum effective armor that you could have is 16,500. Against a raid boss, it is exactly 17,265. The reason it is exactly that number is because although raid bosses show that they are level question mark question mark, they are actually treated as a level 63. We also say that for main tanks and raids, the soft cap on armor is actually 13,812 because of the talents we see below. When priests or shamans critically heal you, your armor will increase by 25%, so they'll boost your armor up to that cap for you, and that buff should stay up almost all of the time throughout the fight. The last thing I want to talk about in this section is threat. Though it is not a primary stat, it is a mechanic that is integral to the combat in WoW Classic, and it's fairly easy and quick to explain. Threat is a value that is accrued with an NPC by a player. The player with the highest value will be the target of said NPC's attacks. Threat is accrued by doing damage, and one point of damage equals one point of threat. Threat is also accrued by healing, which causes half as much threat than damage. Damage can only gain threat with the NPC that is receiving the damage. Healing, on the other hand, gains aggro with all NPCs currently involved in the combat. Also, you do not gain any threat for overhealing past someone's maximum health. Finally, you also gain aggro by applying buffs to your team, or applying debuffs to the NPC. The exact numbers for those are specific to each spell. In order to overtake someone in aggro, you must have 10% more threat than the threat of the highest player, or if you're a ranged caster or a hunter, you'll need 30% more threat. This concludes part 1. Check the description for links to sources I cite in the video. I've also included a short discussion as to how I use those sources and any skepticism I may have. Thank you for watching, I hope this helped. Stay tuned for part 2 where we go over physical combat, attack tables, skills, and damage avoidance.